Hi, today we are here with Mr. Juan and we are going to be talking about don't give me time, give me a deadline. And do you know, have you ever heard that famous quote before? Mm -hmm. Do you know who, who, who said it? Nope. <laughs> Duke Ellington is the one claims, uh, that the case people claim that he said, uh, don't give me time, give me a deadline. And I think one of the things that he meant had to do with performing and with getting things ready in music. So one of the reasons that we wanted to talk about this is because we do events all the time and now we have pretty, a pretty good amount of events coming up, live events. And we hear it from our students and sometimes I think even more from the parents saying that, okay, the student is not ready. Yeah. Definitely. So we can say we have a concert in two weeks, we have a concert in a month, we have a concert in three months and we still hear, well, my student is not ready. I actually think that it's almost backwards into mm -hmm. it's good to, instead of being ready, say almost yes when you're not ready. Exactly. Put the deadline first and then almost use the deadline to push yourself to be organized, to have the habit that would support uh, some practice. So that, that way you almost, it's almost like backwards, right? Mm -hmm. To get to the process of getting to perform. And I don't know, I guess for both of us as, an inst as instructors, would you say the value of performing live is? No, it's tremendous. Like it's a super important, it gets you better. Um, you learn a lot from it. There's a lot of, of things, there's a lot of things, at least for me, that I've learned performing that I haven't learned anywhere else. Yes, so. it's we, one of the things that we say, and, and I, I would like to meet one of these days, maybe a coach, someone that does uh, soccer. Would someone have a soccer team with no games? I don't think anyone would sense, yeah, yeah, I don't think anyone would have a soccer team and, and just oh we're not gonna do any games, we're just gonna do practices. But we have a lot of students that wanna take lessons but never do a performance. And it's exactly the same thing. Yeah. For us the performance are the games and they're such a critical part of, of learning and of moving your ability forward. So we truly wanna encourage everyone, you know, everyone that is a part of our programs to instead of like when someone says, "Do I am I ready for an event?" Almost think of like the other way around. Let's say yes to be ready, yeah. and at the same time, I think our events work in a way that if a week before the student is not gonna make it, I think both of our teachers and I'm sure you have done this before. We can make accommodations. We can change the song, for example. Yeah. So sometimes, okay, the, the student, I like to personally do this. I like to give them options, maybe three songs. Mm -hmm. Maybe they failed at one, but maybe they can play the other two. So it's almost instead of like, oh, I'm not going to be ready. I think when someone says, I'm not going to be ready, but the concert is in three months, it's like there's something. Mm, uh, yeah, there's a lot of time. I mean, I've had students tell me, I'm not ready. And I always tell them, I was like, the concert's in one month. You're going to be ready by that time. Yeah, yeah. So we definitely want to encourage all of our students to participate in live performances. We mention all the time that maybe you want to uh, be a part of not necessarily what we do, but other things in your community. Maybe you mm -hmm. can play for your church. Maybe you can play for your school. One of the things, and I think this still amazes me, is we have a lot of students that no one in their life, except their parents, knows that they're doing music lessons. Yeah. And it's like, how do you get opportunities? How do you get someone to, oh, you play piano, right? Do you want to play in this? When someone doesn't know, when, when no one knows that you are actually doing a exactly. piano. So it is really, really important, I think, to put the word out that you enjoy this, that music is something that you like. And not necessarily be scared about saying yes to something. I think is we all say yes to things and then get particularly concerned about how we're going to pull that off. I don't know yeah. if that's happened to yeah. you oh, yeah. recently. <laughs> yeah. Because one thing, and, and I tend to do this a lot in my life, I tend to say yes to things that scare me. And when I feel scared, I like saying yes. And of course, right after I go like, what did I just do? Exactly. Like it, how, puts the, uh, it adds the pressure. Yeah. yeah. How am I going to like survive this? But I think that's how we all grow. And mm -hmm. I think that's how we... You have to be a little bit put in a position that you're not in your comfort zone. You're not playing the easiest song in the book. Exactly. You are playing something that is challenging you. But definitely, we want to encourage you guys, if you love music, and, and one thing that to me, I went to see an artist the other day, performed a uh, big, big artist, and he said that there's no music industry anymore. That is all live. Mm. And to me, it's, it's hard to think that the music industry has changed enough that that is true. 
But the biggest thing that I think you can take from that is the importance of, of performing because as an industry, we will always have live performances. Yep. And as a student, I would say there's no point in delaying your performing. There's no like, oh, let me wait until I'm older. Let me wait until I have been doing this for years. No, go ahead and get started. Get your feet wet. Enjoy mm. the process. The first times you probably will be super mm. uh, oh, nervous. Yeah. It's normal. So you have to go through that process. But at the same time, always try to say yes. Try to say yes to things that scare you. Try to say yes to things that put you in a position that you're excited. And at the same time, I think that's truly how we move forward. Yeah, the, the first first concert is always the scary one. But then yeah. it gets better after each one. Any, any tips to how to get through those <laughs> well, nerves of the first time? Well, for me, I always tell my students and for me too, <clears throat> the nerves, <coughs> try to convert the nerves into excitement, which yes. is it's a hard thing to do. It's, but you, once you, you, you feel the nerves and then you're like, okay, switch around, be like, okay, let's do this, get pumped, get excited. And when you get on, you're going to be ready to go. Yeah. I like to, my strategy is always over practice. So I tend to <laughs> over practice when I know I'm going to be freaked out. I over practice yeah. because I know that. If it fell apart, I absolutely did my best. I practiced mm -hmm. in the plane. I practiced in the, you know, in the hotel room. I practiced, practiced, practiced until like there was no more time to practice. And when some things happen, you know, it's, it's part of the of music. It's part of the beauty of performing live. It won't be perfect, but at the same time, I think definitely give it your best. Yep. So we hope this video truly encourages some people there to sign up to some of the stuff that we're doing here at the Hit Music Studio. You definitely can check some of our events on our Facebook page. And we hope to see you guys very soon.